Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us uh, from the world. My name is Alexandra, your host with the mostest, and thank you for tuning in to the Diaspora, uh, to the Diaspora on the Rise talk show, hosted by Campfire TV, that's airing on Life MTV Live. As the name states, it's Diaspora on the Rise, where we're trying to engage the community in, you know, building wealth and allowing them to see the resources that are out there for them to take a part of. So the reason why I started this segment of the show is because I want to, you know, go out there and find all the resources that guys who, you know, take make the decision to come from wherever part of Africa they are coming from and they come to, you know, to this blessed land of America or go to the UK or go to Dubai or go to any part of the world they think they're going to find uh, uh, or create themselves a, a better life. I want them to know that there are resources out there that they can use or there are people out there they can, you know, talk to and, you know, make something good happen in the world. So, Diaspora on the Rise is out there to one, celebrate individuals who have come from wherever part of Africa they have come in and they've come to America, come to UK, come, come to any international land and they've made use of that land. They have built a life there and they've tried to give back to community. So, we're celebrating those individuals. At the same time, Diaspora on the Rise is going to be an informative platform where you guys can learn where um, if you want to buy land, who do you talk to? Who do you go to? If you want to, uh, you know, set a, uh, an insurance company, who do you talk to? If you want to set a business here and in Uganda and in Kenya, who do you have to talk to? What is there for you to do? Who to talk, who to research with and stuff like that? So. On that note, if you guys have seen the flyers that have been passing around, we are back to talking about the biggest issue out there regarding the biggest resource that is on this planet, land. And we've had so many talking people asking questions about, uh, Alex, do you know anybody who I can talk to? Do you know a lawyer I can talk to? Do you know someone who can, you know, a broker who can give me a good, uh, good deal on land, on you know, an apartment, or this and this and that? And earlier on this of last year, we did have one of our own um, attorney or uh, a legal analyst, uh, Joy Bell Tampa, talk to you guys. And that show was very, very massive. You guys were engaging with us. You're talking to us. So we brought back, we brought her back again to talk to you guys. So please, please, please take a moment and share this page. Share this uh, talk show to anyone out there you think is going to love to watch this segment. Share with anyone you think is going to enjoy, is going to be educated, is going to be informed. And on that note, I'm going to, you know, just take a moment to allow these guys to introduce themselves, to talk to you guys, and, you know, uh, introduce themselves, who they are, what they do, and in what capacity they're going to talk to you guys. So, without further ado, I'm going to ask these uh, ladies and gentlemen to introduce themselves, starting with the lady on my uh, right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. It is great um, to be here with you on Diaspora on the Rise to share um, about the laws governing land in Uganda for anyone who's interested in purchasing land, transacting in land business. Uh, we hope that we can answer your questions as best as we possibly can. So I'm Joy Bell Tamper. In, um, I have been a lawyer for 14, 15 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at, at my colleague and I'm waiting for her to verify because we, we were in law school together. So, But um, here we are. We hope we can be of good use to all of you. All right. Thank nice you. to have you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Council Mugabe. I work with the uh, Uganda Justice Foundation. I'm a partner with Teodic and Company Advocates uh, in Uganda. Uh, we've come to be of help. But only to the Ugandan, uh, Ugandan community, but uh, even the investors who, who wish to come and invest in Uganda uh, concerning the land, uh, land laws, uh, because this is one of the resources that is being uh, 
on demand and we cannot afford seeing our people being duped and <coughs> mm. losing out on, uh, on their rights on the land. So we're here to help and I believe we're going to be of great help. All right, it's good to have you. Hello, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, our viewers. My name is Dorothy Chitakufe. I'm a lawyer. I've been a lawyer for 15 years now. And uh, it's my honor to be on this show to help you guys know the basic principles of land law. If you need to purchase land, if you have any problems or issues with land, where you have to go, the procedures you have to follow, the things you need to know, and all those people who would wish to invest in Uganda, we are here to help you and tell you that is the best place you can invest in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. For everyone who's tuning in, as I mentioned, we're learning about <coughs> land. Please take a moment to share this page with anyone you think might be interested. I would think this is such a good idea for them to just take a moment and learn from these people. Now, just to start to kick this show off, because we have a very limited uh, time area, um, time to work in. Let's take, let's take this issue and just, you know, speak a little bit about it. You know, just summarize on it and get it out of the way. The issue regarding Lusanja and what happened in the last year, it was such a big scandal, such a big um, area that everyone has been trying to surmise what happened, what went wrong. So I'm bringing the brightest minds that I know of right now and I want you guys to, in a few words, explain to me the whys, the how come it happened, who was to blame, how do we move from it and how can we, you know, how can this mistake not be repeated again? So I'm going to start with you, Jepa. <laughs> um, I don't think that we are really uh, the best people to comment about Losanja because mm. one, we did not purchase, we were not residents in Losanja, neither were we participants in the transaction. However, I think that, I, I don't know, a council here will agree with me, I think there are lessons to learn from Losanja. Mm. And I think that today it's not about discussing the Losanja issue because the Losanja issue has has people that were involved in it, it mm. has judges that have made decisions on it, but um, what we can do this morning is I'm going to ask my colleagues here to share about the lessons we can take from the Lusanja issue mm. because um, land issues with the, the first um, line that you always hear from a professor in the land law class is that land is a thorny issue. Mm -hmm. All the people who have published books on land law and land issues start with one statement that says land is a thorny issue. So if land is a thorny issue it means that we must deal with it carefully. So um, rather than us come here and discuss a matter that we don't have all the facts on in um, raise questions of credibility and reliability, we would rather l decide to help those who are viewing us to mm. say that there were lessons that were learned from the mistakes in that land issue and what can you say to somebody else not to fall victim? I don't know what you say, counsel. Um, uh, that's true. Uh, we can only discuss on, uh, on a matter that we have no facts on. We are not, part, uh, we're not party in, in, the, in this the transaction. Uh, the, uh, the transaction I mean, I, I uh, we have to we have to pick lessons that will help other people not to fall victim yeah. of the same circumstances. That's where I was going with that because I would have uh, since I'm speaking on behalf of everyone who's in the diaspora, or maybe might have had a plot of in Los Angeles. Mm. How would you have protected yourself? Like. Uh, just walk me through if because we don't know, none of us were there all of us were not there but I want to know if if that happened to me what would I have done what would my lawyer have told me what something along those lines okay thank you so much to comment on that issue when I read about the facts because we are not allowed to even discuss um, issues that are in court because there are their actions being taken about each and every party that was involved. There were so many loopholes, there were so many mistakes mm. that we can't really, you know. But um, the Lusanja issue had lawyers in it, and there are so many things that were done illegally. Mm. Uh, I don't really want to go into that, but I, I would say that because it was more of a procedural thing, it was a case, they, they claim papers you know, moved hands, they, sure. they made services, people didn't respond. So that's why you see those different actions took place. Because they claim they filed a suit, they served uh, whoever was on that land before the evictions. They didn't respond to, you know, like redeem their rights and come to court and say, we are going to be evicted 
illegally. They, they sat on their rights and then they came out after the whole process had, you know, been overtaken by events. Mm -hmm. But we don't really want to go into the facts of that because that would be prejudicial yeah. anyway. It would be prejudicial, but for who? I don't know. All right, so I can listening to you, Council, mm -hmm. what I would think is um, that... Um, the best thing that we can say right now is that ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Not an excuse. Do not, not sit back when something is happening. Mm -hmm. or you see people moving around your land, people driving by, coming by that are strangers, and um, you sit back and you're comfortable. Um, I think that, 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 that one of the things that happened to the residents of Los Angeles was they chose to be ignorant or they chose to think that because they were a big number that they could have survived because they were big numbers. Um, one of the things that we always, always insist on in land issues is diligence. You know, yes. Due diligence yes. can never, ever be relegated when mm. you're dealing with yes. a land issue. If you're ever careless, if you ever um, ignore even the slightest, let's call it even just your sixth sense, going into, into the legalities, you know, without going mm -hmm. into using your mm -hmm. brain and putting the law on the paper, mm. there should be at least just your sixth sense that tells you that why does this person come by? Because there must have been surveyors All who passed time. by. You yeah. know? Sure. There must have been strangers coming around. Mm -hmm. Once you see strangers coming around your house all the time, I mean, you see people here, even when you make a U-turn in their home, they, they'll call you. Oh, they you know that something you know? is wrong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, cancel. Now, uh, I think uh, the greatest lesson we have to uh, look into this matter is uh, whenever you sub, you should always um, respond. Yes. You cannot just come up, as my colleague said, um, ignorance of the law is not defense. Mm -hmm. You cannot come up and say, I didn't know that something is happening. Because if you did not, if you are served, as it's allegedly that mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Kichoncho, through his lawyers, they served and there were no response. So you cannot come up after eviction and, and claim that this is my property. And another thing, Documentation should always be looked at. If this is your property, what shows that this is your property legally? You cannot just come up and make a claim that this is my property. You have to have documents backing it up. Mm. Now, when I saw, um, I was watching. I cannot say that I have facts. I don't have facts. But I, I, when I was watching, most of the, the claimants, uh, most of the victims, they were like, they don't have, they, they had no, they had no documents showing they were Vivanja. Holders. Holders, yes. So we, uh, if this is your property, what shows it's your property? Mm. If this is your estate, what shows it's your estate? We must look at and keep records. This is one thing I uh, when I was doing some research in the morning. You, you must keep records. Mm. Don't underestimate the power of record. When we're in court, we always look at documentation. Mm. We always look, we we'll ask for that. I don't know what my colleague has to say about it, but we should always look at documentation. If you are served, respond. Find a lawyer. You were talking about finding a lawyer as well and good, but we have the fact that half of the people, half of the people who are here are going to be, you know, they're under the poverty line or they're poor, they cannot afford a lawyer, they cannot afford any. So who are we, who are we going to forward them to? Who am I going to tell them that, hey, if you have this and this, go to this person to talk to? So, uh, exactly. so uh, the, the, the organization, the institutions, the justice, the like justice center. Uh, I'm not, I'm not here to advocate for them. Mm. We also do that. They, some of them do pro bono, but I mean they can always. They are, they, they're always, they're always giving free legal service. We should know where to find uh, these kind, kinds of people. I, I just, uh, justice center. Every court in Uganda, uh, you will find their, uh, their chambers over there. So seek for them. Seek for the council, and they will help you. All right. I mean, so, there's also... Uh, legal aid? Legal aid, yeah. Legal aid. legal aid is one of the best places where you can go, and you cannot afford a lawyer, mm -hmm. but um, legal aid gives you a free lawyer because they receive a lot of funding from Danida. Mm -hmm. They receive a lot of funding from most of um, the Commonwealth funds a lot of free legal services. 
there is public defender of uganda if they're still in business there's basically um there's a number of places that people need to loan that they can go and get free services because these people are being funded i mean they receive big time grants of hundreds of millions yeah. to just do that because if say if there were females on this land that had issues with their land they could have gone to feed us the, the the female lawyers association would have been there to cover them to give them free legal services because somebody else is subsidizing for the services so there's always access to free legal services like the best free legal services legal aid of uganda okay we do apologize for the technical difficulties that we're having uh, in regards to our volume and we're hoping our team is going to take care of that in the next few minutes so um if you guys are watching us i do have a people who are uh, tuning in online uh princess just let's thank you for tuning in nantenda m kasozi as always you're one of our biggest fans thank you for always being online um we are talking about the issue of wanting to buy land whether you're in the diaspora whether you're in uganda yourself or you're in a different part of the world but you're interested in acquiring uh real estate you're interested in you're interested in buying um something that's going to help you accumulate wealth and right now land is the biggest issue that we have and we want to talk to people we want to talk to people who are you know versed in this sort of things before we, we conclude on losanja i want to ask i want to ask about the losanja issue just to finish it up um we had sorry about that I do apologize, we are taking care of that situation right now. Um, so to go to go back to the issue of Lusanya, just to finish it up and, and wrap it up. Yes, maybe the people were not vigilant in having to look into these issues because they got comfortable with where they are. Some already had already built houses for themselves. They have started a family. You know that you know you already all set and everything. Um, so I want to ask before we conclude, where did the law fail these guys? We do have a lot. We we, we saw the situation where. It was said that oh you know the court order was was not supposed to happen the magistrate who took care of this was not supposed to issue that it was an illegal issue um issue of you know eviction it was the law where everyone was saying oh this lawyer wasn't supposed to this uh, magistrate wasn't supposed to do this this high court judge wasn't supposed to do this so where in that term is the where did the law fail us because we had that issue where that was happening so what was that all right all i can say that there were some illegalities mm. yes um, before an order uh, is granted, I think the magistrate or the judge should come uh, to look at their own ground mm. and see the, uh, the impact. Because now we're looking at, we're looking at these uh, families that are being, uh, they have, they are homeless right now. True. The last time I saw they were sleeping in the tents that the government provided. Mm. These are citizens of Uganda and everybody is equal under the law. And before, uh, uh, in the eyes of the law, so I don't think I want it. I don't want to uh, impeach or, or say that, that the, <coughs> the judge was wrong in, uh, in granting an execution order. But again, I would pray that before it's granted, the judge should come on locus, come on ground and see the impact, the magnitude of this mm. of. of, of uh, I don't want to go political, but I think it's, we, are, we are Ugandans and uh, we need to. The law should cover. The law should defend in a certain way. But again, we shouldn't rely on that. I would again say this. The law will be just, but the law can be unjust. In the way, if you are not vigilant. Now, my, my fellow uh, uh, counsel said there were... Uh, there were all sorts of people who came on ground, the surveyors. So you, you look at somebody uh, trespassing on your land and you just look on things like Rusanja issues will keep on rising in the mm. country because of lack of vigilance. All I'm praying that if you ever find somebody trespassing or trying to do all sorts of things on your land, come up, look, for, you have to rise up. This is your property. This is, you have a right to this property. So take care of your, uh, your land. It will be well. 
Thank you, Council. The principle in equity says whoever mm. comes to equity must come with plain hands. Exactly. And equity helps the vigilant. Mm. So we, we don't really want to go into the, the insights of this case. But uh, I think there was also some bit of laxity on, on the part of the tenants. What I used to tell my clients back home, the moment you settle yourself on land, make sure you introduce yourself to the local area LC chairperson. Because mm. these people are sensitized about laws. They have workshops. They are called in for conferences. They know each and everything about the law, the land laws. Because even the er we have earlier land committees, and most of the people that are elected on those committees are residents in a particular area. So if that one of the, the summons or the court documents were served, I believed one of the local council chairpersons or the committee members could have come across a document. So that was incumbent upon the local council committees or mm. the, the chairpersons to call upon the residents and say, this is what we have received from court. Where do we go from now? So like my fellow colleagues said, we have all those you know, institutions in place. We have legal aid, we have the public defenders and whatever. And the chairpersons know each and every, most of those things. Because at least I've been in, in workshops where they attend. And they are sensitized about land laws. So I, maybe it's because of the corruption, because we hear there was a lot of corruption. There was a lot of corruption, maybe, yeah. maybe that's why they didn't protect these people. But mm. we should look at our people, their <laughs> rights, and the families that are going to be impacted. disturbed and All impacted right. on. One last word from... Uh, about things like this when they happen, and mm. is that um, Ugandans have failed to learn that it is their duty to protect themselves. Yep. I saw um, either it was the inauguration of uh, the presidency this time, or one of those Kololo celebrations, where uh, the president stood up and said, and I am saying to you guys, leave my people on the Uganda. Mm. These people have decided to believe a person's word of mouth exactly. as opposed to using other means to protect themselves. Exactly. If you're going to rely on a person's word who's telling you, oh, I'm going to protect all of you who are on land in one way or another, mm. but you are not documented on that land, and that causes them to lay back then they have learned a lesson. That is why I keep on insisting that the most important thing for us to discuss when it comes to Busanja is the mistakes and the lessons to be picked up be from here. Up. Because um, you want to blame the people of Busanja? Look at um, what happened in um, the, the Bank of Uganda saga. Seven banks have been sold Already, in a yeah. haphazard way. They appoint a committee. And what does the committee say? It's a, it's a, we're not going to investigate because mm -hmm. it's a waste of taxpayers' money. Yeah. What are you talking about? The, the level to which the nation has descended has come to a place whereby every Ugandan who has an interest to protect must rise up and do the right thing. Why do I say that? If you do the right thing, it doesn't matter how long it takes the right thing will come back to protect you. Exactly. Today, the land in Lusanja may be illegally occupied, but because we have seen the repatriation of the, uh, of the land, remember yeah. that the Indians, mm -hmm. how they came back and they were given back mm -hmm. their land, that gives us hope that things can change, yeah. that things will not change in your benefit if you do not have the right documentation. The only reason the Indians who came back when the land law was changed to favor them came and claimed effectively mm, was because in as much as they had been evicted, thrown out and taken off the land and, and the, the land was given to other people, they mm. still had that documentation, documentation. Yes. like council saying here. Mm -hmm. So when they came back, mm. they presented what they had and that was how they were given back their land. So what am I saying? If you have an interest that can be eroded simply because of what we are saying, it could have been corruption, it could be fear, because, I mean, right now, everybody is operating, irrespective of the laws that exist in the land, everybody operates under fear. They don't sure. operate That's because they know the right thing to do, mm. but they operate because if I lost my life today, I won't be here tomorrow to claim what... What is mine, yeah. So, um, what am I saying? Do the right thing. Council say it's not the authority. She say, get yourself whatever you need to get. Protect yourself. 
I mean, Tosa as a there have been times where he's dealt with old people, mm. and they will show you from the first exactly. document they had. You can find people who have documents from 1900. Yep. So if you don't take the step to protect yourself, mm. even those who will come back to redeem you, whether today or tomorrow, have nowhere to start. Council, uh, commenting about that, I, I handled a matter whereby I was. Uh, my client was of, uh, around 85 years, but the, la the old lady had all documents, documentation, and this, um, the, plaint uh, the plaintiff was claiming the land. You know what he did? He came with fake documents, but the lady came with documents of, of I saw 1999, 1995. Mm. And this she knew the value of having now, something written down. And just come mm. and Documentation is paramount here. We speak if you, now in court. You don't come and just give testimony without backing it up with the documents. So I think the Rusanja issue uh, should be always a lesson to everybody transacting land. Mm -hmm. You should know what kind of land you buy. If if it's a leasehold, it should be a you no. Know, with leasehold, you must have a contract with, between the leaser and the and the see. Mm. So you cannot just come and say I'm. Uh, so let's conclude and then so we can settle on the next topic. Yeah. Mm. Yes, just just to, to, to summarize that. I remember there was this saga of departed Asian custodian yeah. board. You remember mm. that? It was a big issue, especially in Ginger, in the eastern. Mm. It was a very big issue. And I remember there was this guy who was just given they, they normally give them a temporary allocation mm -hmm. of a property. Just imagine someone comes here, you, you people have been occupying this place for over 20 years, and the person comes with an allocation letter and says, I've been allocated this property mm. by Departed Asians Custodian Board. I had a client, and the person who sold this property to our client had all the documents from, you know, way back how they, they acquired the property. And now this one is coming to defeat their ownership just with a letter of allocation mm. from a government institution. Mm -hmm. That is how terrible it can be. So the documents, the documents we keep are valuable yeah. because they really save us a lot. If we didn't have all these documents, we had about six titles. I'm talking about six titles. Mm -hmm. These guys had been repatriated. They came back. They repossessed their... Pro they had each and every document you can ever think about. All right. They had the repossession certificates. They had everything. Now, how are you going to fight that person with just your allocation letter? Well said. Uh, as you guys who, keep, who are watching online with us, we do have a lot of people coming in. Shaggy Uganda is saying um, these people from uh, the people who came to uh, demolish camp, they were escorted by the Uganda police. And Princess Stressless is saying, but Council Mugabe, if one has no interest in land, it doesn't matter whether a locust was visited or not. And then Princess Stressless goes on to say, well said, uh, Council Dorothy. Um, we do apologize for anyone who's having network issues. We have had some uh, problems with our sound, but I think that has been rectified right now and we do apologize uh, for that please please share this page or this conversation with someone else who you think is going to be interested in buying land or securing property uh, somewhere in uganda or somewhere uh, outside of uganda because this is a show that they would want to watch now we are going to go into the uh, major topic of today and why we brought uh, this uh, the legal analyst to here to come here to talk to you guys i am in the diaspora i have been here what 10 years but now i've accumulated which is now this is the major topic where I think a lot of people are so interested. I've accumulated enough resources to actually want to go back to Uganda and invest. But now, the atmosphere that's in these African countries is everyone for themselves. That's the atmosphere for everyone. Be it a lawyer, be it a doctor, be it this person. If you want me to treat you, you have to pay me money. If you want me to buy this and this and this, I need transport to actually go to the, you know this land board. That's the, that's, the, that's the excuse everyone is going to tell you. Everyone is in it to survive. Everyone, that's the attitude for everyone now I am a diaspora and I've been here uh, for a long time I've gained enough money to actually want to go back home and buy land walk me through the first and the first three steps I must do in order to secure my land I was talking to um, uh, council Isaac earlier on before you guys came and we were saying we we're talking about this 
whether I am a, 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 a dual citizenship or uh, I own, I am a Ugandan, I have been here for a long time, whether that applies as well. So I want you guys to touch on that. What documentation do I need? Walk me through the process of me actually purchasing a piece of land, a plot of land. Let's say the example is going to be 100 by 100. Where do I start? This is my legal team. Walk me through. Keeping in mind that half the people are watching us from wherever they're watching us, UK, are all people who don't understand your legal verbiage, but they still want to purchase land. <laughs> you are all set. Go. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that, Alec. Yeah. For, I, I would start with the, the supreme law of, you, of the land, that is mm. the constitution. It says land belongs to the citizens of Uganda. So that is where we drive all our rights. If you're a citizen of Uganda, you will own the land. But we just need to know, we have different tenure systems yeah. of land. Mm. What kind of land do you want to buy? We have a leasehold, we have customary land, we have Milo land, and we have a freehold land. So there are laws that govern all these four different tenure systems. Now, if you're a citizen of Uganda, you can own land in whatever tenure system. Mm. If you are a non-citizen, you cannot purchase a freehold land, you cannot acquire Milo, you cannot acquire customary, but you can acquire a lease. You understand? Mm. So that is where we, we are supposed to start from. Two, when you want to buy land and you go on the ground, we are calling upon our people, the citizens of Uganda, the investors, always engage a lawyer. You might look at, this, uh, at, at us as being very expensive people, mm. but we are going to, to I don't know the, the best word I can, I can use, but we, we are going to help you and walk you through these whole processes, and at least you know you have a backup position than a person who is just going to come and, and engage a broker. Mm. And you're going to pay this person a commission. But if that deal goes bad, you are not going to recover from him. Now, you come to a lawyer and he says, I'm going to handle this transaction and I need a 10% mm. of the purchase price. And you're like, oh my God, that is a lot of money. But you are giving a broker 30% of the purchase price. That's true. The person who doesn't even know the law. And you're not guaranteeing it. connected you mm. to, the, to, the, to the seller or what, and he says, you have a good deal. But you don't want to engage a lawyer who knows the law. There are so many that there, it is a process if you want to purchase land. We have to conduct searches. And wh as we conduct a search, we are ensuring that we are dealing with the right person. There are no encumbrances. There are no third party claims. At, at times, people come and they're excited. I have the money. They have shown me the building. It is 400 million. Oh, yes. I, I have my money. I can pay the broker. I can settle whoever is in, but you do not know. People are mortgaging properties. Mm. There, there, there can be, you know, I, I had a client who sold his property, but he had mortgaged that very property in five banks. Can you believe it? <laughs> it didn't have a title, but he had the, the agreements, yes. the local council agreements, mm. but he had six of them, and you cannot believe he had the original. And all those five banks had original copies of that letter. Wow. Yes, but but the person who was purchasing insisted, mm. I need a lawyer. I have to use a lawyer. And as I was conducting my ground search on the ground, the neighbor tells me, be very careful. <laughs> Pride Bank has an interest. Equity Bank wow. has an interest. Mm. Finca has an interest. I said, what? The five banks all had the original agreement. So if this client had not insisted on using the lawyer, he was parting with 250 million. I mean, 250 million. But because he insisted and he said, I am ready to pay those costs we saved him a lot and on top of that there was another a, like a wife who was claiming an interest so there were so many <laughs> what we call encumbrances mm. 
the property had a problem. So we are calling up our fellow citizens. Engage lawyers. The money that you're paying to brokers is a lot. Pay it to this person who has the legal brains, mm. who knows where to go and what to do. And services. Mm. Yeah. So, right. uh, true, but uh, before you enter into a transaction, a land transaction in Uganda, mm. please kindly uh, do due, due diligence because you will find one, uh, one property, one piece of land with several arguments. For the LC, uh, LC chair, a person. I handled a matter whereby uh, one land had like four, four agreements. The land changing hands to uh, different people four times, and they are all documented from the LC chairperson. But uh, what what I'm trying to say is, go on ground. The the true people can give you the right information are the neighbors. The people, the, the neighbors, the, the neighbors are, always seem to know what's going on. Yes, they will always tell you what's mm. happening on that land. Sure, but you just go because you're more excited. You have the, uh, as my uh, council Dorothy said, you have the money. So excited, excitement. They also mm. tell you you can do this on this uh, land. You also have your own interests. You don't do. Uh, you don't go on to follow up who who owned it. Who if it's a title, who was the who who, who is on the mother title? How many times has the title uh, changed change hands. hands? So, can you, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, lawyers, 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 you go for an LC chairperson. They will not help you uh, in future stress. But the same people going to the the write people, fake documents to actually have people, that resolved. The same people who are mm. writing you uh, an agreement. The same person is going to write another agreement on another person. Mm. And you keep on losing. And in future, you're not going to only lose money, you're mm. also going to lose time. Time, yeah. You waste time in courts. Now, the lawyer who, whom you would have brought on the initial, on the takeoff of the transaction, now you're inviting the same, uh, same lawyer in when future, the <laughs> and now you're going to pay more money. more money. It's a vicious cycle. Exactly. Now, mm. Please, kindly, to, uh, to save yourself from all this future stress, find a lawyer, carry out a transaction, find out on ground who owns this uh, 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 this uh, land. Mm. If there are encumbrances, yes, you will find like caveats on the mm -hmm, land. Mm -hmm. Can this caveat be lifted? Mm -hmm. What are the processes of lifting this mm -hmm. land? Mm -hmm. Now, you cannot just come up and say, if a land has encumbrances, I'm, I won't go for it. You won't buy it. Most of the land in Uganda have encumbrances. All I, I must tell you this. Some it has history, it has its own drama. Mm. But how can we do, how, how, how will I maneuver in future? But the lawyer is the best person who will tell you the legalities of, of lifting or if, if it's a caveat, how will it be lifted? All right. Actually, mm. before, before Joy Bell says something, just to add on this, uh, most people now who own properties are lodging caveats on their properties because they do not know that the wife can mortgage it, the children can sell it, so mm. they, they are lodging caveats on their properties. Yeah, um... um <laughs> Thank you, Council. I was thinking about the question you said. Three things I would do if I was buying land. Yep. The first thing I would say is be patient. Mm -hmm. That's not a virtue anyone, a lot of people share. Uh, mm. Now, at the stage where we are, mm. learning the lessons we are learning from the mistakes that have been done in the exactly. past, the first thing that you need to invest after you have accumulated all this money through mm. hard work, stress, and toiling is be patient in disbursing your money. Mm. For you to have $100,000 and you want to buy a prime piece of property, just uh, there should be things that come to your mind. If this property is prime, how many other people have seen the fact exactly. that it's prime? That it looks if like this property is located in such a, 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 a marketable place, mm. how many people would be interested in this property? Why would council be selling their land to me today? Um, you know, is, is he in a hurry? Has he decided to do something else? Mm. So one of the first That's things I would say that. to anyone who wants to buy land mm. is be patient. It took you time to accumulate money. Mm -hmm. It should take you time to be to disperse your money anyhow. Mm. You know, the first thing you should do is be patient because even the process is going to take a little bit of time, mm -hmm. such as cannot be done in one day. That's true. You know, um, here we see our council stressless in the UK. She's saying the first thing to do is due diligence. When mm -hmm. you say due diligence, what do we mean? You know, because due diligence is taking the time to really, really find out. Yeah. Council talked about something very interesting. She's here. Yeah, he said, 
when you look at the title, look at the mother title. Mm. Those land titles, you see, sometimes they can be a subdivision. Mm -hmm. I can come to you with the original title, mm -hmm. and the original title says two acres. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> so I come to you and I say, I'm selling to you two acres of land. Take your title. Go to your lawyer. I just saw Hillary, our vice, uh, mm. our vice president, just commented and he said, what about lawyers who still lie? <laughs> That's true. When you have a lawyer still <laughs> it's in the land for you, you know what? You go and report them to law council. Exactly. Do you know the reason why we are dressed the way we are? I would know, I would know from Martha that you are a lawyer. No, no. <laughs> we are obligated mm. to behave and dress and do certain things in a certain way. True. This talk show may mm. not be watched right now by so many people, but within a few days, it can be watched by our professors, mm. watched by different people. And they can call us up on certain <clears throat> things. If we come here dressed in tarot jeans, you know, with holes, mm. we got a cup tongue the other way, <laughs> and we got a, a t shirt with one hand, <laughs> and uh, mm. we got a, a tattoo right here that says, All oh, lawyers are thieves. That is. <laughs> No, seriously, we That's can talk upon about such things. So one of the Decor. advantages of engaging a lawyer, mm. and even though your lawyer steals from you, is one thing that is most important. You have recourse. That yes. is what Councilor Dorothy was saying. Mm -hmm. yep. you, when it comes to the broker, you have no recourse. Mm -hmm. when it comes you have to no plan lawyer, B. Yeah. You have and that recourse. lawyer was trained in Uganda, they will never run away. Exactly. Mm. No council will find you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And your university will find you. Christian University has been having a proposal to say they want to have the right to pull a degree, not just a law degree, yeah. but yep. any degree from anyone that they train who eventually embarrasses the university. And exactly. Yeah. See, the people go to workplaces, mm. you meet your wife, the NFL, NBA, throw you out, they mm. don't want anything to do with you. The same thing happens with lawyers. Yep. When people behave in a certain manner, in that uh, 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 someone who has engaged you can prove that they engaged your services, they paid you, and you stole their land, Hillary, my brother. You have recourse. So you we... and the broker, it is between you and the broker. It's, it, I mean, you're going to settle it out on the street. But if you deal with a lawyer, you're mm. going to settle it up. One way or another, you're going to recover. You don't lose 120%. So one of the most important things, be patient. Be patient. Engage a lawyer. Mm. Because you don't lose 120%. Mm -hmm. You actually gain everything you put in. You put in. You mm. as a lawyer. Now, the third thing is this thing we are saying, due diligence. Because everybody's saying, Princess Stratless is a lawyer. She's engaging with us online. We have all these beautiful people in the studio. Mm. And everybody's saying, due diligence is doing everything that you possibly can do yes. turn every stone and leave no stone and turn why are we talking about neighbors neighbors your neighbors they might be very illiterate they know everything that's going on in your house yes. that's true. true they know everything they know even who goes and I'm comes in yep. you they, mm. know. Mm -hmm. they know more than you will ever know and some of them have been living in that place much longer than you who mm. That they will tell you the important things because i'm going to let um Kasu here to discuss more because i have done this show before but i wanted us to get more from them is there are things that are important the people around the land can tell you that that land has a well that we get water from mm. what is the effect of buying land that has a well that services the whole the whole community, community yeah you know those people will tell you that there is a burial ground in that land. Mm. And when they say there is a burial ground, even though these people might be smart, they bury and they don't put tombstones. <coughs> I the I idea to say the tenure on this land, mm. on paper, may look like it's people. But this might be customary, customary. land owned by a community, a whole mm. clan. Because if it's a burial ground, then that means it's a different way you're going to process to, to handle that land. situation. So. All right, so now because we're handling those are the first top three of everyone who's trying to buy land. If you're in diaspora, if you're you know you had earn money and you want to know how to take care of it, these are the first three things you have to do. One is be patient, which is uh, you know at this point in time we have so many young people, our young generation saying, "Me, I want that the land in two months. I want to have bought land." You know they have their money, they know the situation, they know the problems. Once you get this five thousand dollars, if you don't buy the, if you don't buy something with it within the next two months, that money is chewed it's going to disappear so patience is something i think everyone has to practice exactly. you know because you as you know many ugandans live in the, live in with this understanding that you don't know what tomorrow is going to what tomorrow brings so they eat the money there and then 
So due diligence is the third one, and then engage a lawyer, which is something I've come to understand and appreciate that it's such it helps you so much. Now let's start with the let's also handle the people who already are here. They are here that you know they, they they had a piece of land in Uganda. They had a piece of land maybe in Kenya. Um, they had a piece of land wherever they are in the country. Or because law at the end of the day is all the same across lands. Just a few things that you know yeah. change. If you already owned your own your your piece of land somewhere else, and you decide to come to America, you decide to go to the UK. Uh, how, how are you protect how are you going to protect yourself what is the first thing you have to think about when you say hey i've gotten my visa i'm going i don't know when i'll come back but this is the only thing this is my wealth this is all i own what are the steps of you protecting yourself what should i do to my piece of land before i head out to protect myself because one i'm going to face squatters those ones you can never get rid of them so you have to find i want you want to you know see how you can walk through all those so give me um, i want you to give me some solutions to all those scenarios okay now it, it gets back to what my colleagues talked about mm. documentation mm. that is the best way you safeguard your land it is the best way you can safeguard your property doc you have documents get documents get it if it's for example customary land you have like junks of acres when you say customary land what do you mean Walk you you, you just bought maybe from a family, mm. maybe from what, and you know, you, you, it is hard to get like free it, it's, it's, it's something it's, like this. Customary land can be land that, say, a clan had. And so, oh, wait, uh, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, oh, wait, uh, gets this land. Most of this customary land comes, mm. stems from um, the 1900 mm -hmm. agreement, where lands were divided and given to tribes, to clans, to religions, Families. to communities to certain people. So because this land was given to a collective group of people, mm. it belongs to them because they are tied together by either their customs, their beliefs, or their common language. Okay. So that's why you have the word customary. Mm. So because these guys are hooked together by either they are, it's a tribe, or it's a clan, or it's a, it's a community, but mm. they have certain things that tie them together. So this land was apportioned to them then in the 1900 Uganda, I mean, argument where the land, the British were trying to apportion the land in Uganda, trying to put <coughs> this land in the right way. So this land is usually communally owned. Communally owned. It is you're never usually owned by a single person. One person. So it's usually, uh, you know, your grandfather passes down. Mm. There's land that you can also go in the village and say, you know, Takari Afe. Why do you go to your village and say, you know, Afe? Because your great, 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 mm. great, great grandfather bought that land and he said this is where our family will, will be pictured. so everybody who comes through his children's children his children's children to his children no, that will be land there at all right so as so, you were saying yeah, to, mm. to proceed i i won't even use those to save time so at least secure proper documents on your land get a title before you leave mm. or before you leave and you you have limited time engage a lawyer enter into what we call a retainer agreement mm. this agreement that we call a retainer agreement is giving this lawyer specific instructions i bought this land describe the land i want you to take over survey it process the title and once the document is out either keep it or give it to my wife, give it to my mother, mm. do something. You're giving this lawyer, you're engaging him, and you're going to pay for all those services. Always engage a lawyer, get a document mm. before you leave. Or, because most of the diaspora people are trusting their relatives. They are trusting their parents. And these it's guys have really disappointed us. True. Yep. And uh, like we say, documents, documents, documents. That mm. is the key word I'm going to use. When you buy and you have left property back home, there are people who come, they have all their titles, the, their property is developed, and then they are going to get, for example, Isaac. And say, Isaac, gang. Now you are using words. Mm. You do not know what Isaac's heart is telling him. His intentions. He, he mm. can be like, oh my God, oh nobody judge but they need and chifunye today. So always have a document. You can sign a caretaking agreement mm. with Isaac. That is also a good document. And you say, Isaac, I'm leaving you my property, take care of it, get tenants. You can use the boys' quarters, it get tenants for the main house, do this, and you're giving him instructions. 
that is also a document. Mm. If you do not trust anybody, you can put a caveat, lodge a caveat, you mm. as the owner, and you're saying, I have an interest in this land, I'm lodging this caveat just to protect my interest. Yep. All right, That's let's let's get a, a word from uh, uh, Council no, Isaac. The best way for t of, of protecting your land is caveating it. You will save yourself from hassle. You so walk me through what a caveat is and what it entails and what its purpose is. Now the purpose of uh, the purpose of, mm. uh, of caveating your land uh, is um, to ke to keep your interest in the land. Protect it. To pro you, you protect your interest from a third party claim or any any other claims. Mm. So, uh, if you are setting off to leave Uganda, please, the best way, caveat your land. Now, on all instances, let me speak this in Uganda, there are instances of Motongagamba can't take care of mom. Ne mama na ina interest mu chino chitu. Mm. Aja enja mu ma ja chitu. Kaka ja chitu. You kira ina kat ovanga mu wa de rights. どうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでしょうどうでし
she has land and she has been processing this land. She has been, she, she subdivided it, she gave part of it to the church, to a school, and then sold part of it to some people. Mm. And there was this particular surveyor that she had engaged. And when the surveyor, I think, wanted to steal the land. And so the surveyor call, sends her a message and says, send me a letter giving me authority to transact and deal in your land. So this lady, just because we were talking and she was asking me, what do you call a che I said, I, I, I am a lawyer by profession. So she calls me and says, I have a message from my surveyor and he says I should write to her a letter authorizing her to deal in my land. So I said, wait a minute, we should get a lawyer back home mm. and they draft you a power of attorney specifying what this surveyor has, has to, to do on that land or else this guy is going to take, take going to store it and I'm telling you the moment this lady called the surveyor and told him I'm getting a lawyer go to him and sign my powers of attorney the guy disappeared yeah. <laughs> so after she, had, she had to hire another, another surveyor but at least mm. I was happy that I was helpful and we got the lawyer back home to draft the power of attorney they mm. sent it here it was you know executed well it was well aligned and it was very specific and I'm happy at least. I saved her land. Okay. So I want to give a chance, so I'm going to just read through a few of the, your questions before we continue, before we f uh, finish up. Uh, we do have Hillary saying, what about lawyers who still land titles after we have trusted them as actual buyers? I think we have, uh, have, we have answered that question somewhere. And then um, we have Izzy, Izzy Edward Mukasa saying, this is interesting, but my question is, can you engage a lawyer in a case of land that in the due uh, process he betrays you he gets in touch with your opponent and he is paid more money by your opponent and you lose like you lose the case uh because such cases are very common here um i think maybe I'll, I'll give you a chance to go through that question and see who's going to answer that uh caveat your land if it's it's registered uh we also have hillary saying again how can we offer free legal services to the many poor ugandans in remote areas from uh motukula to luero to masaka to kabari to arua to iganga and and palisa so i, I hope he, I, I think one of the lawyers is going to give us where we can find those legal uh, services for free and then is is also asking again what is your opinion to many vivanja owners in uganda that are being evicted from their vivanja by the said land owners and then uh princess Justice again is going to on to say on the issue of power of attorney the clauses should be very clear to what instructions you're going mm -hmm. to give up which is something that they have stressed so those two big questions please answer those two and then we're going to go we're going to go back to the last uh question and then we can conclude the show um since i worked with um uh, legal uh, uh, um, public and, defenders. And, and I worked with public defender. I worked with an organization that gave uh, free legal services. I'm going to emphasize one more time. Mm. Um, these guys receive enormous amounts of funding to do this. So what needs to be done is uh, the question that Dealer is asking is: Are you asking Campfire TV to do this for you uh, to do a sensitization uh, thing? Because then. It means that we would have to mobilize, but it's so hard to find lawyers who will do freelance to do this thing. Mm. Um, I would think that um, there should be legal aid services uh, yeah. providers who can go out into these areas and do this sensitization because they have the funding for it. Mm. They have the funding to hire the hotels. They have the funding to hire the projectors. Mm -hmm. They have the funding to put out the law out there. They have the funding to do everything. So if someone is not doing the right thing, then. Um, Unfortunately, we are limited in our ability to help. I mean, because I can offer these two counsel here, the two Mugabis, to go and do that for you. But who, are you going to pay for their services, uh, Hillary Taylor? I mean, if you're willing, I, these two... Um, willing to spare their time. Travel, <laughs> um, I will definitely offer them to you. Maybe uh, God has touched and them and they can offer their I services for free. Oh. I'm them to you, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be here to do the, the, the digital uh, poco poco. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now, on the other question of uh, the, the, the Vivanja holders, why mm. don't I let these two counsel here talk to uh, us about this? The, the Vivanja holders, at least the law that I know, say. What is the Vivanja in English? I need to. Is that the, uh, the list transactions? We're talking about the list and lease. Is that the one? Or no, 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 how no. is it? How, what is it called in English? We in, have the lawful occupants and bona fide occupants. 
Okay. And the squatters would be, the people you would call squatters would fall under which category? They would, because they would, they would also uh, fall under that. But it, but it you also see, depends. The problem is, <coughs> you see the words that Kanso is using? Mm. She's saying lawful oh. occupants and, and bona fide, bona fide occupants. occupants. These are people that people previously carelessly allowed onto their land mm. without giving them caregiver agreements. Mm. These people stayed for a long period of time on their land and because they stayed for a long period of time mm. they acquired a right to remain on the land. And so am I right? Mm -hmm. yeah, a bona fide occupant is somebody who settled on the land without the consent of, uh, of the, the owner. owner. Mm. So, so and a lawful occupant is, uh, is an occupant, uh, is a person who um, with consent of their owner, mm. settled on the land or made some developments on the land. So uh, the Vivanja holders, we, we should, uh, I'm also, go, I'm going to go back to what I said before. If you're a Tivanja holder, what shows that you're a Tivanja holder? Do you have a document that shows that uh, you have an agreement? Because we have an, uh, a, a if this land is registered. Are you paying Gusulu? Are you paying Gusulu? Come, I was coming to that. <laughs> So I need, I need to first find out who is the what's Bivanja. That's what I want to walk me through what that means. Then I can understand your terminology because I'm trying to go back to exactly. The landowner must pay usuru to to the land landowner. There is this big piece of Shibanja. land. I own the land. Mm -hmm. It's for example twenty acres, mm. and then you come on. You have an interest in one acre. So you're a Chivanja owner. Chivanja is a word like you see Chiwani. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. I'm very serious. Over time, words gain legal <coughs> recognition. Mm. That's right. Mm. In, it, it, it's even in the law, under the law. Over time, once mm. a word has been used for a long time, it gains legal recognition. So, Chibanja was people who would come on your land with, you know, there are people, these things are stemming from time immemorial. Yeah. This is, this, this is where this whole Chibanja thing comes from. Then this person comes, some of them even come, you know, like they come on that land when they have paid just a bit of land, of, exactly. of, of the money, and they're occupying the land, right? So while they're on this land for a small period of time, mm. eventually they stay. Other of these people, so this word with time gained a certain meaning, but it was people who... Came on, they didn't own this land, but somehow they, they ended up onto this like land. Mm. So this word, because of over usage and over time, they now came to be called Bivanja holders. Oh, but it was a word just like Chiwani that now you understand when I say Chiwani, what mm. I mean, you know. So when they came, the law made room and provision because this became a word that was used, known to to be known of these people. But it also comes from the lacuna, from the from the the gap that was created by the fact that caregiver agreements or agreements to allow people to stay on land you for know, a period of time yeah. for a period of time you can come here you leave someone on your land and you die here and you and you left them there and you never said anything about it then what happens this person takes over the land together with their children and their grandchildren and, and that's it Chibanja, they, they, they get what they call the chibanja you know okay understood so council back to you you were discussing well, about uh, the, the Chivanja. Now, to simplify it, well, uh, in the Luganda way, well, Abagamba, Mutaka, the Aoninga Mutaka, Nekutaka. Now, Chivanja, oh, uh, Chiv the, the Chivanja holders, but Aoninga Mutaka. But they don't have a, they are not the registered proprietors. Mm -hmm. mm. You understand? They're not, yep. They, uh, you can, they only, they, re they derive their right from uh, either having an agreement from the owner. So, Bova or Chivanja, what you do, you must recognize the owner and you have to pay Busuru. If you fail to pay the Busuru, you cease. It's like, it's, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember it. It's if, remember those times when we were talking about uh, slavery and all that stuff, where you had to go pay tribute to the person. Is that the same? Okay, so I'm, now it makes sense now. A Luganda word that meant paying tribute. So you pay tribute to the land, to the actual land owner. So then it became Kusura and Mvunjolo. These are words that kept, they get used all the time. And they gain. <laughs> but now it's a real thing because under the law we even have the Kusura and Mvunjolo Act. All right, so well, I think the, the, and I, even the, the law now is very clear, and it says for any of those people to be evicted on 
off the land. It has to be for non-payment. For non-payment. Of Mosul. Or what we call what ground rent now. Is, um, eventually people start, compassion comes in the hearts of, um, of lawyers, of, of lawgivers yeah. and law makers. Mm. To understand and say this person has so lived on this land for, for too long. Years. Yeah. Why should they be evicted? Then therefore now, for you not to lose your interest in the land is just to say they should pay you, you know, something for your land for them. because they t they stayed for too long and now they're here to stay. Mm. You know? So I, I guess at that point in time, the law was looking to preserve homelessness, mm. but now the reckless way in which it's being done in Uganda is happening. It's uh, they've taken so uh, so much advantage. And now to to, to mm. do some supplement. Now some people don't know who levies the the school. Some people, uh, the, the owners, land owners, who always court some um, a certain am amount of money. It's not a person that levies. It's the land board. Mm. And we should always follow that. I had an, an, um, an encounter uh, with some people whereby the land owner was levying a, a big chunk of money. Just uh, to, 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 he wanted just to eliminate them from, uh, from but it's not right. It's the land board to do uh, the levying of them soon. All right. Um, so I think one more question. I think I think that one must have been answered earlier on when you're talking about uh, the committee of lawyers or the Christian University, where it said, um, was it the question? I think if your opponent is or an opponent paid you more, and then you get to betray them. I don't think that applies. Every time your um, lawyer behaves in a manner mm. that is compromising in your situation, you have right recourse. to report <coughs> your lawyer to a place where you'll, you'll get redress. You, you report to law council and you'll get redress. All right. Just to finish this off, uh, we, this is a topic that has been, it's going to be ongoing where we do talk about things that you can do if you want to buy uh, or accumulate wealth in Africa or accumulate wealth in Uganda, uh, specifically, or you build, or you want to buy land in some form. Um, this program is going to be on, con on continuing. We might not have Attorney Isaac next uh, next week, but in the next couple of days we do, we will have Attorney uh, Dorothy in house and Attorney um, Joy Bell in the house. So in case you have any more questions, this is going to be an ongoing discussion so that we can get all those little questions that you guys have all those problems that keep happening uh in you know in uganda or even in different parts of africa we can address those issues before we do uh, conclude i want to find out what do what do you guys recommend if i say if i'm from the diaspora i've already bought land but i ended up that they've sold me what in the legal term it has as you said the words that have gained momentum and people you know lawyers had to make way for it if you have bought uh, they say buying air. Now you bought land in or you bought land that's not even existent, but you had documentation that looked or was falsified enough to look like it was real. Um, it had a seal from the land board. It has all these things that made you believe that you had actually bought something legitimate. How do I handle that? What should be my steps? What should I follow? And what should I be asking my lawyers to do? I just want to know what the legal, what things I should do in order for that to happen. <laughs> Maybe start. No, there's something I want to talk about. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I don't know how other countries operate, but mm. I have seen, um, I have a friend of mine, a family uh, friend of ours, uh, actually, he's uh, my son's um, customary uh, kind of uh, grandpa in Chicago. But uh, I know for sure that if you send a huge amount of money from this country, mm. say, um, to Uganda or Kenya or Tanzania and you're doing a big purchase, uh, it has been known that the government here will always ask you why you're sending a huge amount of money. Now, um, I want to say to people who have the intention to recover their money, this will apply, I'm not sure about other countries, but I'll speak for America because I have seen it here and it works. Mm. When you want to transact, say, <coughs> land that costs over 50000 Send a hundred thousand dollars. Send it from your account here. As soon as you start to do that transfer, you're going to get a notification from the FBI and from different places to ask you why this money is being sent from your account to another to a certain destination because they're trying to protect the people here from mm. being defrauded. So at that point in time, protect your interests by doing this, by letting them know exactly what you're doing. I am buying land from A, B, C, D through um, Mutesi Akufe Company Advocates mm. and uh, this is what the land costs and I'm buying it in Uganda. Some people do not want to declare it because they believe that the government here will levy them tax. But you can say I'm buying it for my parents. 
you know why because um that we have the ability using um the fi the financial institutions act of the government here to trace the money to where it went because now they will trace it to when it goes from here to stand big bank in uganda mm. and they know that land goes for that reason should you at any one point claim that your money was stolen from you you can come back here they will go to to, to stand big bank and ask who took that money yeah because some monies are being transferred multiple there, there are multiple transactions mm. of transparencies for you to lose your money so if you're here and you really want to protect your money, you've earned it legally and you know it. I'm telling you for a fact because I know, I saw my friend, he took his 401k to buy land in Uganda. These guys here follow up on your money and they have the systems to follow up where the money was picked up from, which bank and whatever. Mm. So that can protect you in one way or another. But in the other way... Um, I would say that we have said everything that needs to be said on that matter. Sure. The due diligence is this is why we are here is to bring out the most important things to you to say yes this title can look legitimate but you see the thing the, the, the reason why we are saying it's good to have a lawyer we have friends we know people there's a network I will go to the land board and I will know someone. I'll go to the land registry and someone will point me to someone. Even when there's a question on that title mm. and someone doesn't want to directly say or write or commit themselves on paper, they can whisper to you and say, counsel, <laughs> watch out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is the reason why it is good to engage people who you can trust, people who you can find to mm -hmm. help you because they will go and find out is this land really existent is this title the real title is this title a fabricated title mm. you know uh, council we, we live uh, our our country is in a situation whereby everything is fraudulently obtained that's you can, yes you can pay anything to, you can pay some money to have, uh, to have anything in uganda mm. i there are instances whereby one land has two or three land titles, land titles. All, all authentic it's an embarrassment to our system, uh, our system in Uganda. But it's but, existent. But we, have it's to, we have to. We cannot deny it. Mm. We cannot deny it. So I don't know how we're going to handle that. But that should be Uganda government. I cannot. I, 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 I mean, uh, we, we had, we all read about the saga of the person who sold the land on which the parliament of Uganda sits. That's <laughs> uh, you remember the issue of the selling of the airport, Entebbe Airport, mm. sold by an individual to an investor. So these are all things that cause us to go slow what you should know. you look for when you're even when so as he said as he mentioned you're going to be defrauded by even a very legitimate looking piece of paper you won't know what can you look for if if i come to a lawyer what what are you going to instruct me and tell me that hey if this does not appear on this piece of document hesitate you know you know take a few minutes and don't sign if you don't see this seal that looks like this and this and this what can I just as a lawyer, as you know, legal uh, people who have seen oh. this? What should I be looking for before I sign? Because yeah. lawyers are, are the ones you are going to, you know, trust in this situation. You trust that they know what they're going to tell you. So, I I, I would like to appreciate our government because they have brought into our system some of the things that weren't there, like the searches, mm. and now it is by law. Before you purchase anything, you must conduct a search. And this search is, is written. You, you write a letter to the land registry and yep. you say, I'm interested in this property. I'll, I would like to conduct a search. So they are going to send you back a report. Mm. And they are saying, yeah, we have conducted this search. This, uh, this is the title. This is the LRV number, the leasehold or freehold, or it's a Milo, or it's customary, because now even customary land, they have customary titles. Mm. Yeah. So you are getting an authentic document from the land registry, and it has a seal. So that, that I, I want to appreciate our government, because initially we would just call someone and say, my do friend Gray Bell, do a search for me. <laughs> but at least now it is documented. Now it's I documented. write a letter and I get that report, the search report. Mm -hmm. And so if you base your, your agreement on this search report, at least you have, you have a basis. 
um, uh, attorney Joe Bobeshin that you know you can use your bank to, to you know trace back where your money go I exactly. uh, went back uh, now if we can't if you know if like maybe say that the people of uh, people who came here earlier they don't know this maybe us this younger generation is more uh, likely to use our banks we are online we always have documentation we have those but you have people who have been here for 20 years they came here when they're 50 already they're 60 70 they like doing things the old-fashioned way like in sending a sentence send it to this person how can you protect those people who said bantus is the bantus is the actually that is why we are here and mm. that is why we are sensitizing them because right now even in uganda if you sent me a certain amount of money mm. they are going to question it i must have a reason why am I receiving that kind of money? Mm. I have a client of mine who sent me money. He was purchasing land, and he sent it directly on my account. And they froze it. They froze my account. I couldn't access it until I had to explain. He had to write to email me and tell me this is my lawyer. I'm engaging her. I'm purchasing this kind of land, blah, 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 blah. And so that transaction was recorded. So even if we were maybe going to purchase air, we had the document. Mm -hmm. We had a history. Mm -hmm. He sent the money, and even the bank said this. And we just did a transfer from my account to the account of, of the buyer, the, ba the, the seller. Of the seller, yeah. All right. So it was easy. Even if there was going to be any problem, we had that kind of transaction. The, what I would say to people who are old school and they want to do things an old school way is... Mm -hmm we have learned that the old school way is good but sometimes it may have its loopholes so when this person comes to you and they say uh listen my daughter my son um you're my lawyer but me i want to do things this way you 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 take the time this is your client they are paying you take the time to tell them why it would be good mm. for the money to go a b c d because it protects both you and them you know it protects you from your client because if anything ever happened we ha we we lose more than actually the landowners mm. because you you stand to serve a, a, an embarrassment for the rest of your life should you be found in law council to be guilty of you know carelessness while handling it's also <coughs> called professional negligence while handling um a client's murder a client, yeah yeah all right so i want to thank everyone who has been tuning in to this uh to the diaspora on the rise again as i mentioned it's a show that's basically geared to helping you if you're anywhere within the diaspora diaspora meaning that you're anywhere outside your home country and you, try, you want to find out all these resources that are open to you and you want to find you know want to find yourself uh buying land procuring wealth or you know doing all these uh, simple things diaspora on the rise is going to be that show where you come and just you know talk to somebody listen to somebody telling you something about a little bit of everything so that you can you know better prepare yourself for any transaction that you want to do um the lawyers that are brought here today are going to be ongoing they're going to come back uh they're going to be like diaspora on the rise retainers i'm going to use their own words against them so these are lawyers that are going to be or the retainers they're going to be here for whenever you guys need them we will put the information on how to contact them online so if you do want to get in touch with uh attorney uh Joseph Tamper, you want to get in, uh, in uh communicate with attorney isaac or attorney um uh, Dorothy, you do have all those resources going to be open to you. And if you have any question at all, you are, feel free to uh, text us or comment on the page. We'll still see them. They will all see them and they'll be able to answer all your questions. For now, we are sorry if you haven't had a chance to read all your names. Everyone has been tuning in. Uh, Princess Frida, you are coming online. Thank you for watching. Jack Baguma, Rachel Gayla, thank you. Uh, Fred uh, uh, Sewanikwa is also um, online. Yes, but both of the two have no land titles with a land title. Okay. Um, all those questions are going to be answered if they, uh, the lawyers take a time um, to answer all your questions for you. I'm um, going to give them just each one minute to give you a last piece of advice, and we're going to close the show, and hopefully you guys will be able to tune in next time when we do answer uh, questions regarding successor, you know, uh, succession and, and all those big big questions that you guys posted online earlier we will answer them another time um so in the next few minutes please give a word of advice or commentary or to all the people watching you and then we'll close the show all right. um well thank you so much for watching us we hope that we have been of any help to you and we hope that we have answered the pertinent questions that are um, important for you to understand there are very many things to talk about when it, a, a discussion on land is wide yeah. so um, there are so many things that need to be divulged into there are things that you need to take precaution about but I guess I should let council here tell us about precautionary matters mm -hmm. in um, land issues that should cause someone to 
yeah. raise a red it. flag mm. when they hit them. Um, before I get to that, there's something that I wanted to say before mm. we wind up. Now, because we're, we're speaking to people in diaspora, some of, uh, of them, no, I had a, a, a matter whereby one of, the, one of the clients here lost their rights over their land because uh, they lost their citizenship of Uganda. Now, if you're not, if you've lost your citizenship, citizenship of Uganda, you can still have a right to own land. Mm -hmm. If you you had a, a freehold or a uh, a mile land, you can just be converted to a leasehold. It should be converted to a leasehold. Mm -hmm. You cannot own a, a freehold or a, a mile land if you are a non-citizen. Non but you can always convert it to a leasehold. It shouldn't. It, it, this lease. This contract will be uh, shouldn't exit 99 years. That's 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 my law. Mm. So uh, if you are to purchase, transact any form of uh, transaction in on land, all I pray in, uh, and I ask you involve a lawyer, find the the owners, the fa the, uh, the mother if it's a title. Who was the who was the registered proprietor on the mother title? Mm. Find out how many times has this title exchanged ownership, and it'll save you. Uh, it's it will, it's gonna save you a lot of hassle, a lot, a lot of stress. And if you find yourself in this stress, it can also be solved. Yes, right. sir. It can also be solved. Mm -hmm. Don't say that I gave up on my on my land. It's in court. And it has already been taken. It can always be recovered. All right. right to learn. Thank you very much. And Attorney Dorothy, a last parting word from you. Yeah, thank you. I would like to encourage all our citizens, do not lose hope. Mm. You can still own and enjoy your proprietary rights back home. We are here to help. And mm. just like our host said, this discussion is going to be ongoing. I am looking forward for another opportunity to come here and we go deeper. All right. We go so, deeper on these matters. All right. Thank you so much. I want to thank everyone who's tuning in for to the next time we do have this show. Uh, we're going to start with the gentleman Chiwala Gerard is saying, "I bought land in Jomai, but not title up to now. I need help." That will be our opening statement next time. So Chiwala Gerard, wherever you are, we are going to be the first case that these attorneys right over here are going to help you throughout the day. They're going to answer your questions online right now, but then they'll have a chance to talk about it on air the next time we uh, we talk about this. So for now, I've been your host, Alex, with the mostest. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, to Diaspora on the Rise on Comfort TV. We are airing on hashtag Life MTV Live. That's the, phase on pa uh, the page on Facebook that we air from. So all our shows are going to be airing from that page. Please, please continue to show us some love. Share the page, like, follow, and continue to just spread the love wherever you go. I wish you a lovely day and a lovely evening as well. Bye. We'll see you next time.